pick it up free today on the App Store. Castle Storm 2 is the sequel to the late PS3, Xbox 360 generation Castle Storm that adds an over strategic map in the single player campaign as well as some tweaks to the gameplay with some additions and a new faction. So the Vikings from the first game, you have the undead that you're able to control in two campaigns. The first with the human campaign and then the second that it continues the story with the undead campaign. The core gameplay from the first game makes a return. You still control a ballista where you're defending either a camp or a castle both that also have a flag that can be captured in a capture the flag type of scenario by the other side. You still have troops that you send out that have their own resource value that you just accumulate through time that you're able to send it into battle that have their own population cap. For instance, uh, footmen, this is a medieval fantasy theme, may, might have like 10 time type of points, whereas a knight or a griffin is going to be up there, or a golem is like 80, and you have to wait for the number to increase. That is your resource value for your troops in battle. The tweak here, though, is there's a population cap with that, so if you send in one golem, you, you, can, you still have to wait for it to go all the way to 80, even though you could technically send in 10. So you're mixing the type of troops that you have here. You also have the ballista while this is going on that you control that has its own type of ammo that has a limit in, in how much you can run out in different Fuel types sucks. of ammo where, where you have to stick to, to one or the other. And with your ballista you, you can either choose to take out their castle, take out their troops, or even knock out their ballista. Castle Storm Tomb though adds now, leaders for the type of units that you have, like for the footmen or for the knight, you'll see a character that has a name that you can send them individually into battle. They cost the same but are far stronger. The catch here, though, is if you lose them, if they get taken out, then you can't use that unit line. You don't lose that guy. You just use that line, and then you can't upgrade them to make them stronger along with your hero that you're also upgrading and by upgrading them you have to do different tasks like take out so many units with melee weapons or heal block attacks etc that, that kind of thing that is uh, that makes sense that's relevant to that type of unit the gameplay you're seeing here is of the first Gavin's campaign I'm over halfway through the, this one this is the first campaign and then the second one is Luna's campaign that follows the undead faction. These are both, you know, pretty long. Like, um, you're looking at a dozen plus hours to beat each of these campaigns, w which I did. There's no difficulty setting. You just play them and then that's it. Besides the gameplay differences with the leader units, the single player campaign has this big strategic map where you're controlling territory doing this by building up resource buildings like farms, mines for stone or gold, along with castles that expand your territories that you also have to protect against enemies like that gradually and encroach upon them. While this is all going on, you have different quests to complete where you're sending at first just your leader Gavins of the first campaign around, then you meet other commanders that have their their own line of units that you move them around independently and the resources get more complicated you have to have uh, more and more to get the more advanced buildings that also get to have their resources but it's not an overwhelming thing it's just you build a couple type uh, like resource types and a lot of this stuff it's designed in a way that uh, you can really ignore it. this is the single player campaign there is no Co split screen co-op that has been advertised in the single player campaign you can only play by yourself to play co-op there is a separate mode that you can play single player or co-op where you have the, the split screen and with all of this you're able to control individual units now not just your hero but any unit on the battlefield you can zoom in and then you can click on them and boom you got them along with this graphically it gets it's, it's obviously quite a bit better 
And you have, um, most significantly though, not just the quality of the graphics, the background and foreground. Like when you take out a unit, they can fall to either spot, like organically. And the focus of where you're looking, even when you zoom in, is very, very sharp. So it's easy to tell what's going on, whether you're controlling a unit separately or if you're firing your ballista and trying to zoom in to see what's going on. But the co-op is the only multiplayer in Castle Storm 2 where you can work together through scenarios and then after that's done, then that's basically it for any multiplayer type of game. The original had multi competitive multiplayer where you could build your castle and defend it. There were, um, I mean, some issues with this <laughs> that you could, you could exploit, but it did exist. This feature is completely gone. There is no online multiplayer. It's just limited to split screen co-op and it's just those handful of scenarios. It's really bad and deliberately so. It's designed to be what it is, like a mobile game. And I really do wonder if that was the original intent, but the engine that they used and like graphically and just development taking too long that uh, they just went with, well, we got to release this on uh, like PC and consoles. And that's why it, um, when you play, and, and especially with the overmap, that's the big addition to it where you're, you're managing all the different resources. You get that feeling early on that the challenge is just gone. This is the other side of the coin though for uh, like with mobile games, it's, it's often too hard or ridiculously too easy. And this feels that way because they don't have any of the microtransactions or anything like that. But um, what that does with uh, these kind of games is mask the lack of balance that you have and the lack of progression. Just by playing, you know, like if you play a, like a proper console PC game, you have to learn the various systems over the course of a campaign, multiplayer game, whatever, to get better at it. And you do have like upgrades too, but you have to work for them or you have to change how you play. You might have to take control of a unit and it's deceiving because you can do that with Castle Storm 2. The difference being though, they upgrade just by using them in battle and they also upgrade whether you control them or not. So a lot of it is, it becomes instead of using it out of necessity, you're using it out of boredom because when you're sending in a bunch of units and you're gonna win a battle, you don't have to control either your hero or any of the other units or, or the commanders for them because you're gonna win, you're gonna get a little bump, but you'll get like a little bit more of a bump sooner that makes no difference <laughs> in terms of enemy level. And it makes even less of a difference in battle because the level of the enemies that you face are never too hard. Even if they're like one level above, you see a little number uh, on the top of each of your units. You can still take them out you know, quite easily because uh, that unit might have a higher level, but you can just send in one of your stronger units or use it in combination with your ballista. Like they're really, this really needs um, very delicate balance or some kind of counters where you can't just ex exploit it. The scenarios that you have is you're either defending a camp or a castle and you're either attacking a camp, a castle, or just a string of units that they send at you. One other separate scenario is it forces you to, to just play one of your hero units. With the hero unit scenario, what happens here is if you're too weak, you're using the abilities, but you're doing this kite spam thing where you can literally just do a ranged attack, sit far enough away and you'll win, or otherwise you can run off and, and have some type of a healing move as well. So it's not, uh, I mean, I mean, you have to use those abilities, but that's the amount of depth that you have with that. With the battles, what happens is um, you get, you send a couple units in. You want to wait for your like resource meter timer to go up, 
And then when that's far enough, you, you can send in like a stronger unit and use your, you know, spam your ballista, which you're able to do easily no matter what scenario it is. Your units get to the other side of the screen and they sit there. And then you can wait and just send in your super uber powerful units. At winch point, when they spawn one by one or a couple at a time, they get knocked out right away because you got a golem smashing them right there. And it, on rare occasions, can happen in reverse. If their level happens to be higher where you get into a battle, your skill isn't going to matter. The units you send out are too weak. They can take out your ballista right away, and then they, they come in, and then they can, can constantly take it out. So there's no, there's no uh, reward either way where oh I, I barely won that or or oh cool they barely won it doesn't it doesn't feel anything it either feels um, most of the time that it was just too easy or on the opposite side of the coin that uh, well I can't win this so so that's it I'm not gonna do anything to hammer it home even a little bit more though you have the multiplayer competitive multiplayer is gone and this it wasn't perfectly balanced in Castle Storm 1, but it did at least exist. And the, along with the competitive multiplayer, you could build your own castle in the first game and design how you want. Now, the best course of action is just putting a big tall wall in the front. So they needed to do some tweaks here, but this is an example. Okay, rather than bothering, bother balancing it, let's just throw it out. No online anything. And let's just have local co-op. But... The single player campaign is too long, there's too much like management, like that'll be boring. So let's do the just scenarios uh, with split screen. And you know, then they can make use of, well, you can possess units, the other guy can co control the ballista, like this can be fun. And it is, if you are playing it in co-op, uh, this mode is going to be the best part about it is playing with somebody else. But it is limited, you're only going to do it for a little bit and you get sick of these scenarios. Um, you know, where, where there's, I mean, like 20 of them. <laughs> it's not, there's not like a campaign of these. And then that's it. And that's the game. That's, that's the whole part of it is the, the compromise is really this over strategic map that you had that gets boring after you're a, like a few hours in. And then you got, you know, a couple dozen hours to play it. And, you know, in all likelihood, you're not going to. Well, for most people, I mean, playing on PC or console and why you would be playing a game on those platforms. I mean, you're not sitting waiting around uh, like outside at a restaurant or on a, on a train <laughs> or, or, or during your lunch break at work. You're not gonna be want, want to be playing something where you're sitting down and playing to be playing a game uh, deliberately, right? Because of, of how it's set up. It's supposed to, it's meant to be a time suck. It's not meant to be like a rewarding type of a game. Like the story itself is fine. It's tongue in cheek. Uh, some of the dialogue is, is kind of, you'll get a chuckle, is, is uh, slightly clever. Uh, but, you know, not to be, not, not like taken seriously, but the, the actual gameplay and the strategic over map managing your resources and even managing things in battle, that kind of thing, it's just so basic and you're doing the same stuff over and over. It's, it's, uh, it falls into that trap of, if it feels rewarding, um, it's usually just because you're playing it. It's getting you to play because you can do this, you can click this, you can click that. But um, you, you, you forget that nothing sort of matters. But if you're looking to play something that is you know, more, much more casual, where you just want to have like casual fun of, oh, I'll, I'll control this unit, and then I'll control this unit. Oh, I'll use this and blow this up without any fear of uh, like losing the game, where you, where you don't want to have to restart the scenario again. Or you can just ignore like other aspects of the game, like managing your castles, that kind of thing, over time. Where it's where it's very light, like it's it's there isn't any. You don't have to like read a manual to figure everything out. That sort of thing. Like like then it's that small group that is on these platforms. Then you're going to have fun. I think playing it, just paying attention to the story, and then uh, another like small subset group there. If you're playing co-op, especially on consoles, like this can be fun too, because 
you have those uh, scenarios. One person is controlling the units, other person controlling the ballistas, and, and there are there are some tiers to it. Like that's the only spot where you're going to have the challenge and going back. But this is very short. After you beat this, like the the huge chunk of the game is those two campaigns that you have that are only single players, and that's only going to be for the casual group. You're looking to play something. Maybe you're having dinner, or or uh, doing something else at the same time because you, you can just send in some units you can kind of pay attention you want to do something else at the same time like like then you this would work too and there's enough like time there where oh then you have like the story kind of cutscenes. then there isn't much for cutscenes. it's just at, like just at the beginning and the end basically just the the dialogue that you're reading it's something very light you know tongue-in-cheek kind of thing that's the only group that is going to have fun playing this because there's, there's no cheap way to play it either. You've got you to gotta spend money for it. It's not even on Steam. And uh, if you're part of the original group, though, that played Castle Storm, you're probably, you know, I mean, that's, that was so many years ago. And you, you don't see those kind of games anymore that really experiment, try different things. Uh, it's in the same group as another game I'm thinking with the boulder where you roll down Rock of Ages. It's similar to that, kind of using that theme and really being unique when it originally came out for its time and stuff that they could build on. But this one's even worse because the uh, at least Rock of Ages had multiplayer. It didn't work, and, I, and it probably still doesn't work. But like with this one, it's just local co-op. They took out the multiplayer, and then they didn't build upon it even, uh, like like that one as a oddly like more positive example really the issue though is the the challenge and the stuff that they have there that you don't have to mess with and it not mattering because they didn't want to mess with uh, the balance of the two factions or, or like adding another faction and adding like more strategy with that or adding like multiplayer co-op online like if it was like six six on six or four on four something where you can control the units and like really get deep into it tactically uh so there are like a, a few of those people too that did play the original that i mean like like me too i had, I had fun with it i didn't think it was the best game ever but i appreciated it for its creativity and and the different genres kind of mixing together it made it more memorable than some other games that were probably even better but with with how things work nowadays you know uh it's kind of to be expected that it, it falls into this trap there's not enough people kind of into it and it released on epic which is kind of red flag so let me know what you think in the comments below uh it's this it's an odd one there isn't much uh, footage on this game i think everybody knows what it is uh making you know there's not even really a point in reviewing it uh, and it's not on steam so you don't see steam reviews i can't even find it on metacritic uh, either there's got to be somewhere like just looking up there's not even like really reviews on this game which is interesting so this is kind of something i think is uh, like it's the most obvious example of of what they're trying to do what a game is sort of thing and people have just ignored it because of that so interesting but if you like this video give it a like just like to give it a dislike really like to consider subscribing again let me know what you think about Castle Storm 2, did you play the first one? Did you like it? Not like it? No expectations going into this? If you are just in general interested in Castle Storm 2, don't want to hear someone yapping on about it, the rest of this video is just going to be gameplay footage. I'll see you next time.
Yes. At your service. Come forth, my allies. Hello, friend. Very well. In the name of the circle. Hmm. Yes. Wait. An interesting choice. Hmm. Huh? Um. Hmm. Yikes. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> no. Your end is nigh. Uh uh. Attack! Preposterous! How dis. Yes. Sauce. Hmm. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. Does battle await us this day? Come forth, my allies. For the glory of the kingdom! Excellent! Bullseye! Bullseye! Beautiful shot! Beautiful shot! At your service, my liege! My sword is yours, my liege! Ready for anything. March! We do what must be done. Troops are waiting for orders. Be 
beautiful shot. Fine marksmanship. My liege. Great shot. Oh, my. Death to our adversary. This is what we train for. Shall I shoot?
Pick it up free today on the App Store.